Okay, today we're going to talk about what's called the Poisson distribution. Okay, and this is for calculating the probability of a number of events occurring in a fixed interval and that could be an interval of time or an interval of space. If these events happen with a known average. So, what does all of this mean? Oops, hang on, I misspelled average. Okay, so what does all of this mean? Okay, well here's an example. Okay, it says, a bank expects to receive six bad checks per day on average. What is the probability of the bank getting fewer than five bad checks on any given day? Okay, it says, of interest, the number of checks the banks received of interest is the number of checks the banks receives in one day. So the time interval is one day. Okay, that's the interval that we're talking about. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the probability of getting fewer than six bad checks. So that means, oh, I'm sorry, I misread that, fewer than five bad checks. So we want to know the probability of getting one bad check, or two, or three, or four, and so on. Okay, so let's write it like this. The probability that x is less than five. X will be the number of bad checks in a day. Okay? All right, so that's going to be the probability that X equals 1. So let's just write the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. That's the probability that X equals 2 plus the probability that X equals 3 plus the probability that x equals 4. Okay, now let me give you the formula for this kind of probability. Oh, and let's also point out here that it says they expect to receive an average of six bad checks per day. So I will write here mu that's the average, equals 6. Okay, now, we are being asked for the probability of a certain number of events occurring in a fixed interval. And so that's called a Poisson probability. And the formula that we use is this. P of X equals the average known to the power X times E, which is Euler's number. It should be on your calculator, a button for that. It's approximately 2.71. And you raise that to the power of whatever the average is that you know. And then you divide that by X 
factorial. Okay, so for our problem about the checks here, the probability of getting one bad check will equal the average raised to the power 1 times e raised to the power negative 6 divided by 1 factorial. Okay, now 6 to the power 1 is obviously 6. e to the power negative 6, that's a calculator problem. Okay, take out your calculator. If you have a scientific calculator, then there should be a button for E. Okay, you want to hit that and raise that to the power of negative 6, which I am doing right now on my calculator. And I am getting, um, Let's write down four decimal places. I'm getting 0 0.0025. Okay, so we have 6 times 0 0.0025. I'm rounding off to four decimal places. Okay, and one factorial you know is 1. Okay. So we're getting here is about 0 0.0149 okay actually let me let me just write point uh, 0 0.015 that's what is 6 times point zero zero two five. okay so that's the probability of getting one bad check okay let's find the probability of getting two bad checks That will be the average 6 to the power 2 times e to the negative 6 divided by 2 factorial. So that will be 36 times 0 0.0025 divided by 2. And that equals... Point zero four five. What's the probability of getting three bad checks? It's the average raised to the power three times e to the negative six divided by three factorial. So that is two hundred sixteen times 0 0.0025 divided by 6 which comes out to equal 0 0.09 and finally what's the probability of getting four bad checks that will be 6 to the power 4 times e to the negative 6 divided by 4 factorial. Which is 1,296 times 0 0.0025. Divided by... 24 which equals 0 0.135 okay now if we add those up that gives us the probability of getting less than five bad checks. And what does that come out to equal? 
it equals 0 0.285. So there is a 28 and a half percent chance of getting less than five bad checks. Okay, that's how you do this sort of problem. Let's do another example just to get some extra practice here. Okay, let's look at this problem. Leah's answering machine receives about six calls between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. What's the probability that Leah receives more than one call in the next 15 minutes? So they're asking us for the probability that x is greater than 1. How can we do that? Well, what we'll do is we'll find the probability of receiving zero calls and the probability of receiving one call. And so that will be, so they're asking us for this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, prob we're going to find the probability of receiving one or less calls. We're going to find that. And then we will subtract that number from one. And that'll give us whatever's left over. That'll be our answer. Okay, that's how we're going to do this. So now, what's our time interval? It's 15 minutes, right? What's the average number of calls received every 15 minutes? I think that's backwards. So we have to go by what they gave us. They said six calls in a two-hour period. So how many calls would that be every 15 minutes? So we take six and divide it by eight. And we get three-fourths, right? That's the average number of calls received every 15 minutes. It's three-fourths of a call. Of course, you can't really receive three-fourths of a call, right? But that's the average. Okay, where's the number eight coming from, by the way? Our time interval is 15 minutes. The information they gave us was what happens every two hours. How many 15-minute blocks are in two hours? The answer is eight. So we took six calls, which is the two-hour number of calls. We divide that by eight to get the 15-minute number of calls. Okay, so let's find the probability that re she receives no calls. That's the probability that x is zero. Okay, remember the formula? It is mu. to the power x times e to the power negative mu divided by x factorial. Now you might say, oh, but you can't divide by zero. Well, remember that zero factorial is not zero. It is one, okay? and this reminds me, by the way, I realized that we left out the possibility in the previous example, we left out the possibility that they might have received zero bad checks. So let's go up. It's not a big deal. We can just fix that little problem there. Let's just add that in. I, I worried about um, 
what if they receive one or two or three or four but I forgot they might not receive any bad checks so I just need to add that on there that's not hard to do should be 6 to the power 0 e to the power negative 6 divided by 0 factorial that's if they receive the probability that they receive 0 bad checks so that's 1 times 0 0.0025 divided by 0 factorial is 1 and so that is the answer is 0 0.0025 so our answer at the bottom gets a little bit bigger, doesn't it? It's actually 0.2875. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, now let's get back to our, our new question here. We want to know the probability that Leah will receive more than one call in the next 15 minutes. So here's the probability that she will receive zero calls in the next 15 minutes. Okay, 3 fourths to the power zero is one. E to the power of negative 3 fourths. That's a computer problem. Let me, or a calculator problem. Let me calculate that. So that's about 0 0.472. We'll write down those three decimal places. 472. Okay. Zero factorial is one. And so the answer there is 0 0.472. That's the probability that she will receive no calls in the next 15 minutes. Okay, what's the probability that she will receive one call in the next 15 minutes? That is 3 fourths to the power 1 times e to the power negative 3 fourths divided by 1 factorial. So that's 0.75. times 0.472 divided by 1 and that comes out to equal 0.354 now if I add those up that tells me the probability that she will receive zero or one phone calls. So in other words, the probability that she will receive one or less phone calls. And that probability is 0.826. That's the probability of her receiving one or fewer phone calls in the next 15 minutes. The question says, what's the probability that she receives more than one phone call? Okay, well that's very easy to do now. The probability that she receives more than one is just the complement of this. Do you remember that word? More than one means not equal to or less than one. So that will be 1 minus 0 0.826. Where's this 1 coming from? Because the probability of all possibilities adds up to 1. So if you want to just take out a few possibilities and know what's the probability of what's left, then you just do 1 minus the probabilities that you're wanting to discard. Okay, now 1 minus 0.825 equals 0 0.175, and there's our answer.
there is a 17 and a half percent chance of receiving more than one call in a 15 minute period. So these problems are, are pretty easy and straightforward. Okay. The book gives a little bit extra, like there's a section that says estimating the binomial distribution with the Poisson distribution. I think we can I think we can leave that out. Let's not worry about that. Okay. So I think that we can call this here. And that is the end of chapter four. We'll start chapter five on the next lecture.